giving you a SQL Server CDC pipeline here. Again, we're not providing a source for you to use, but if you have your own, we'd certainly encourage you to attempt connecting to it. You can set this up for yourself. Prerequisites really are just though a, a fairly recent version of SQL Server 2017 through 22, and you will need either the standard or enterprise edition. We're using Microsoft SQL Server's native CDC technology to collect change events, um, and that does need to be on the standard or enterprise edition in order to operate. Right. But with that said, I'll kind of show you how that pipeline works. And I'm going to jump back to the Upsolver homepage. And I'm going to select the SQL Server to Snowflake Ingestion Wizard. And again, the first step, much like the S3 example, we're going to connect the SQL Server itself. And if you are creating your own connection, again, you would need a connection string, a username, and a password, and then give the connection a name. I'll show you the details of my connection here. It's basically, sorry, I thought I could show you the details. I'll show you later, but it's basically a connection string, a JDBC connection string. And you can see some documentation built in over on the right that kind of walks you through all the details of what you need to, in order to connect. Now, once we connect in step two, we select our schema mapping. Now, what's really fairly unique in Upsolver is our ability to very simply set up pipelines that can also adapt to schema evolution on the source, right? This is a single pipeline that can replicate multiple schemas and tables all in a single operation. I've seen some products out on the market that if you have 10 different tables, you have to set up a CDC pipeline 10 different times, right? And if the schema evolves in any of those tables, you may actually have to rebuild or alter the pipeline to address the evolving schema on the source. In Upsolver, we handle all of that automatically. So for example, you'll see in these checkbox selections, I can ingest everything from a SQL Server into Snowflake with a simple all selection. Or if I don't want to ingest everything, I can select a specific schema, but I can replicate everything within that schema, including any new table that gets added automatically. And if I don't want to replicate every table, I can also select tables here. I can select, for example, maybe a sales territory table and a special offer table. But within those tables, I can select every column, including any new column that gets added to a table. Right. So if I've had this pipeline running for 60 days and all of a sudden we add a new column to a SQL Server table, that new column will be automatically ingested without having to modify the pipeline at all. Right? And that's all just a, a really nice and dynamic option within Upsolver. The rest of the wizard is more or less the same. We connect to Snowflake here. Again, we verified it. We're going to write into our sandbox schema. And I'm going to give, since this is multiple tables, I'm going to prefix every table with MS SQL CDC, all right? The default is to just create a table in Snowflake that's of the same name as it was in SQL Server. But in this case, I do want to prefix so that I can identify where those tables came from. And then lastly, we'll define the ingestion itself. You already seen these parameters. How often do you want Snowflake to be updated? This parameter is unique to CDC. It's how we're going to handle deletes. Uh, we can either do hard deletes or soft deletes. A hard delete would indicate that when data is deleted in a SQL Server table, we also want it deleted in Snowflake. We can also, though, perform soft deletes, which is where we do not delete data from Snowflake, but we mark the data as deleted. So we basically add a column to your Snowflake table. It'll be a Boolean column, and it'll be true-false on whether or not that column was deleted from the source. Some customers have audit-type requirements where even when rows are deleted from the source, they still want them in their data warehouse just marked as deleted so that we can filter by it. But the result of this wizard is, again, a few lines of SQL, basically setting up a location that we're going to ingest the data into. And then we have both input and output jobs. The input jobs tells Upsolver what data to read from SQL Server. And the output job tells Upsolver how to update Snowflake with uh, each table that's been ingested uh, by the input job. So again, we can modify the code if we need to, or I'll just go ahead and run it. Uh, in a CDC job, the process starts by taking a snapshot of each table that we've included in the CDC definition. I've included two. Uh, the table snapshot status will change from pending to snapshotting and finally to streaming. 
And once we see it in the streaming state, Upsolver is at that point now streaming changes from the source to the target and keeping the target updated in near real time. Right. So let's take about a minute for the initial snapshot to take place. But again, once it has, we can go into Snowflake. You can see a handful of uh, SQL Server CDC tables here. And we can, again, query those tables much like we would SQL Server itself or perform any sort of transformation or analytics against those tables uh, that are being replicated to Snowflake from SQL Server. And those tables are being kept up to date in near real time. Right. So that's really as simple as a CDC pipeline is in Upsolver. And again, one that automatically handles schema evolution so that as schema changes occur on the source, those changes are automatically ingested into Upsolver and automatically processed against the target uh, Snowflake data warehouse. <laughs>